Hey everyone, Scott from Eclebiter Woodworks. Welcome back to the shop. Hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. Today we're going to be working on uh, making a miter sled for my bandsaw so that I can do segmented turning. And um, got everything pretty much set up to start with that. Uh, remove the bandsaw blades so we can get the uh, table all set up. Instead of using a piece of wood to go through the miter slot, I had a, a miter bar from Rockler. Uh, in my stash of goodies and the uh, nice thing about it is is all for the uh, little ball bearings here that help center it are uh, adjustable so that they uh, it won't have any slop in it and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of pieces of uh, old business cards down in the slot to raise this up just enough for the uh, two-sided tape to catch on the bottom of the board I've got my rip fence set here so that I can make sure that I've got everything nice and straight as well as uh, get it positioned properly uh, so that there's enough of an overhang on both sides of the table. So let's go ahead and uh, get the uh, slots filled here and we'll go from there. Now the wood for the base plate is uh, actually a repurposed uh, cabinet door from a downdraft sanding table that didn't quite work out and has been taking up space in the shop. So I'm repurposing it uh, a little bit as I go and we'll be using that as the uh, main table for the, uh, the miter sled. And just line it up against the fence and set that down like so. And then uh, now that we've got this positioned properly, flip it over and a uh, couple of screws and we'll be uh, good to go. So I'll go ahead and stop it right here and uh, bring you back once I'm set up to get the holes drilled. nice thing about the, uh, the miter bar like this is since it is steel you don't have to worry about it uh, bowing or bending uh, with uh, changes in humidity or anything like that. And if you notice that there's a little bit of slop on each, uh, the other side of each one of these little ball bearings here, there's a, a little grub screw that you can adjust to make sure you get all the uh, play out of it. Give it a test fit here. I ended up having to uh, rotate the uh, board 90 degrees because in the other orientation it wasn't quite long enough for the uh, screw holes on the uh, miter bar to fit, fit in where they needed to. Yep, and no slop whatsoever on it. So next step will be for me to put the uh, blade back on my bandsaw and then we'll go ahead and get the uh, kerf cut down so that uh, we can have some sort of a gauge as to where to put the, uh, the uh, fence for it and get everything else set up. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that and uh, we'll go from there. Ever since I got this grizzly bandsaw here a couple of weeks ago, I've just been pleased as punch with it. Hardly had any sort of tweaking or adjusting to do when I initially set it up. You know, blade tracked absolutely perfect and cuts are absolutely table saw straight. So that definitely comes in handy. 
we're going to go ahead and attach this, this back plate here to help stiffen it up and also give a, uh, a good 90 degree reference here. Uh, right now I've just got it tacked on with double sided tape and uh, I'm going to go ahead and drill some pilot holes and then be using one and a half inch uh, pocket hole screws with the coarse thread since we're going into plywood. And uh, now that I know where my blade mark is, I can uh, make sure that I avoid uh, putting a screw in the path of that should I accidentally go too far with the, the uh, bandsaw. So now that that's all attached there, um, what I've done here is this is going to be the, the uh, part that swivels here and uh, it'll be bolted down here and swivel out like so, so that we can get all the different angles. And what I'm going to do is uh, make a, an extendable stop block just so that depending on how, how uh, wide of a uh, individual segment that we need, we'll be able to go to just about any size that I'd be able to fit on my lathe. And uh, what I'm also going to do is, after I mark off all the different angles for the different number of segments, I'm going to uh, drill out some pilot holes so that we can actually put like a little peg in there. And uh, that way we have a positive stop at all the individual angles without a bunch of uh, fiddling. So once I get all the stuff together, I will go ahead and bring you guys back and we'll get moving on this. Okay, so the way this will be set up here is I've got a little relief cut here. I'm going to go ahead and drill the uh, pilot hole so that this bolt, which will act as the uh, pivot for the, uh, the fence, uh, will have something to ride on. I'll go ahead and drill it all the way through, and then on the uh, underside I'll cut in a, a countersink to fit the screw head. And then um, we'll use this knob right here to uh, lock it down once it, everything is in position. And then once we get this done and I set all the different uh, positions for the different angles, then uh, we'll go ahead and drill the, uh, the positive stop peg holes uh, here as well as along the different, uh, different angle positions so that uh, in the future we won't have to keep constantly measuring it and tweaking and adjusting it. Okay, that came out just nicely, and now we'll go ahead and put in the uh, countersink for the uh, bolt head there. And once that's done, we'll be able to sit nice and flush with the, uh, the table of the bandsaw. Okay, let's see how that fits. Gonna have to take this over to the uh, drill press and get that drilled out nice and straight. So I'll bring it back once I get that done. Okay, well, I've got the uh, pivot point set up for the uh, angle gauge, and uh, what I've done is I made up a spreadsheet of uh, what the different number of segments and uh, their associated angle would be. Got my compass here, and so next will come marking out all the different uh, angles on the board here, so we know where to stop the. Uh, angle gauge here and then we'll go ahead and start drilling the uh, pilot holes for the uh, the stop pegs. Okay, well I've got all the uh, individual angles all marked out here and uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to create a pilot hole in the angle gauge here for this threaded insert and what this will do is it'll let the uh, screw pass through it and uh, allow for it to be held in place once it hits the uh, the pilot hole drilled into uh, the boards here and that way uh, it can be uh, snugged up and also uh, it'll also be held in the same place. So what I need to do first is on the uh, angle gauge here I need to drill a half inch pilot hole 
so that uh, this can be turned into it. And once that's done, then I'll be switching to uh, sm a smaller bit here so that when uh, I drill the hole all the way through and into the base here, uh, that it'll only be big enough for just the uh, bolt tip here rather than for the, the whole half inch size for the uh, insert. And then I just use the uh, center from the brad tip uh, bigger bit as the uh, starting point for this one. And just drill the rest of the way through here. So with it being done up that way, the bolt will just barely slip through and uh, once it's all tightened up then there won't be really any play in there. And uh, so now the next step would be for me to go and um, screw this threaded insert into this hole and uh, I'll uh, bring you back once I get that all in there and we'll see how many uh, of these other angles we'll be able to do with this one before we have to drill another uh, another uh, bolt hole or two in here so that it'll match all the different angles. Not exactly sure what that happened there but uh, the camera decided to set down. Uh, so anyway just in case uh, we miss something here uh, I've got, right now, uh, two pilot holes drilled for the bolt to slip down into. Uh, they are set up for the uh, 12 segments at 30 degrees, the uh, uh, 18 segments, or uh, I'm sorry, the 16 segments at 22 and a half. And then uh, I found that um, I, the uh, 18 segments at 20 degrees, I'm going to actually have to uh, create another one of these uh, threaded insert holes because the stop hole is way too close to the one for the uh, 16 segments if I did 18 at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip over to uh, the 20 segments at 18 degrees and we'll see how that one lines up with everything. Yeah, and the one for 18 degrees and 20 segments uh, fits just fine, so I'll go ahead and drill that stop hole out. So that was for the 20 segments. see how it sits for the 15 degrees and 24 segments. I might not be able to fit that one in there, but we'll take a look-see and see where it lands. And actually, yeah, we can do the 15 degrees at 24 segments. So we'll mark a 24. And I will go ahead and get that up the next hole drilled here. Okay, so that was 24. So let's come over here to 11 and a quarter for 32 segments. I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these holes all drilled up, and then once that's done, I'll bring you guys on back. Well, here we are. Got it all finished and finally assembled. The, uh, the angle guide right here has all the uh, positive stops at all the different angles, depending on how many segments we want. Uh, I do have it where the, um, the screws go up and go down into these holes for the positive stops. 
For the uh, stop block, I've got a piece of T-Track uh, glued and screwed to the stop block here. It's uh, held in place by a, a T-bolt and a knob there. Um, got two, got a set of blocks here so that it has uh, plenty of support and doesn't move around on me. Uh, I also did uh, cut in a, a relief cut down here at the bottom so that uh, we can get sawdust out of the way. And uh, going through all the angles, we've got plenty of clearance so that uh, just about any size of segment uh, we want to do is uh, real easy to do. And uh, so it's pretty much just drive the screws down for the number of segments, tighten this up a little bit, and uh, then just set your uh, uh, length for the long side of your segment there and you're ready to go and, and uh, cut them out. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, contact me through uh, my, my website, anklebiterwoodworks.com, or you can uh, find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash anklebiterwoodworks. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.